uh, my name is Amanda Field and <clears throat> I teach yoga here in Houston and um, I'm trying to put together content that um, is you know accessible to uh, anyone. Um, I work with my brother's um, stroke survivor group today, this is my cat Lavinia, and uh, a lot of people were asking me about what they could do to improve their vision. Um, as your vision deteriorates, as you get older, so we're all going to get older, your vision deteriorates, your, your bones deteriorate, so yoga is like really badass preventative medicine. Um, so today I'm just going to go over uh, a couple of what I would say are practical um, eye technique exercises that can help strengthen the um, muscles of the eyes and can relax the ocular nerve um, and might increase like your actual ability to perceive you know, movements outside of your field of vision. So, uh, as with pretty much everything that I teach, I need one an assortment of props. Uh, I have two blocks here. These are, I think they're four inch blocks and a blanket. Um, I'm going to sit on the blanket today. So I'm going to take this blanket and I'm going to roll it. It gives me a little bit of height. And I'm just going to bring it underneath me. Now, let's say you're you're one of my warriors at home. You can do this in a chair, right? A chair with you know handles for your hands to rest on. You could do it um, sitting on the floor. You could do it uh, you know in your bed. What's important is that you're upright through the spine, right? That you feel very much connected into the bones in your bottom that you're sitting on, and that you're capable of breathing deeply. So the longer and more upright you are, the greater your lung capacity. So initially, we just start with. Uh, you know, sitting with the body and feeling the body, that's really important. Um, as far as relaxing the eyes goes, you could close the eyes right now or you could let your vision soften. You could start directing your, your gaze, you know, six feet in front of you, three feet in front of you. Some people practice this exercise with a candle in front of them. Uh, you want to just let the eyes begin to relax. So I'm going to close the eyes and exhale all of the air out of my body. And then I begin inhaling, and I'm going to count in my head, inhaling one, two, three, four, and I pause. And then I exhale, one, two, three, four, and I pause. And I cycle through this breath, you know, three, four minutes. Um, you might notice as you relax into the breathing, the eyes tend to grow softer in the face. So let's, let's go ahead and take a few rounds of breath together, closing the eyes or letting the eyes soften, inhaling through the nose to the count of one, two, three, four, pause. So the breath is expanding the torso in all directions and exhale, squeezing belly button spine to the count of one, two, three, Inhale to the count of four. Pause. And exhale to the count of four. Inhale to four. And exhale to four. As you do this, right, set a timer, five minutes, five minutes, just sitting with yourself and breathing. Um, <clears throat> stress is like the worst thing that can happen to us, you know, getting stressed, it, it taxes everything. Okay, it taxes the eyes, the heart, the low back, your ability to quiet your mind, right, which is what we're doing when we stop and we breathe deeply and consciously which is why every time I do yoga, this, this one comes around. Um, it's calming to her too. So 
I would say, you know, if you want to, if you're working on developing a home practice at this point in time, five minutes every day, set a timer, do that breath work. And we're going to continue breathing with that breath. So, you know, long, slow inhale, a nice, intentional pause where you're like, hmm, what am I feeling inside of my body? And then a nice, good, equally long, slow exhale where you're pressing everything out and you're starting to feel the belly drawn toward the spine and possibly even the pelvic floor lift. For the eye exercises, you're going to let all of this tissue here ties into the jaw and back into the back of the neck. So this is, this is interconnected information. You might find that um, when you start doing the eye work, all of a sudden there's a sensitivity in the jaw that you didn't know existed. So I'm gonna advocate that you start with a slack jaw. So you'll just let the mouth separate and you'll inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And then you'll inhale and exhale through the mouth. Let's see if we can inhale to four. And exhale to four. And then slowly shift your jaw from side to side. And relax the jaw. As far as the sensitivity in the eyes goes, there are a couple of places in the brain that you can direct your attention or your awareness. If you've ever taken a class before, um, teachers will ask you to bring your awareness to your heart or to your low back or to your knees or to your elbow, your shoulders, wherever. We're going to bring our awareness right now. You can take your right hand or your left hand, touch the base of your skull. You can see this a little better on my head. I have this giant ridge back here and some of them are, some of these ridges are more pronounced than others, but you find that ridge and you just kind of rub it in a circular way. It's the occipital ridge. This is where all of the spinal cord like plugs up into the brain and there can be, you know, inflammation and um, irritability, irritation at that point. So when you bring the hand there and you start doing these like gentle circular motions, you might almost immediately want to relax the eyes back into the head. That's what I'm hoping happens for you. And then once the eyes close and relax back into the head, the jaw goes soft as well. And then I want you to imagine that your eye was a post-it note, right? You have a post-it note over each eye. And you're just going to try to draw circles into the corner outer lines of the post-it note. So it's like your eye is doing this inside of your eye socket with your eyes closed. And you're not trying to look and see anything. It's just a movement. So some people, you know, you can actually see the back of the eyelid. I find myself like, oh, can I, what, you know, can I pick up any images that are there? Can I see further? Don't do that. that that's a little too much for the brain. Just focus on the movement. and then switch directions. So again, now your eye is doing this, both at the same time. And you're trying to remember to breathe as well while you're doing this. Um, this is good also if you like do a lot of this during the day, or a lot of this, or a whole lot of, you know, reading. The eyes get fatigued, they're the fastest moving bus muscle in the body, and like, how often do you stretch them or do anything nice for them? Hardly ever. As a matter of fact, you do the opposite. You put them in front of TV screens, you put them in smoky rooms, you, you put them or, uh, you know, on computer screens, you put them, they're stressed. So you're moving things slowly, slowly. My natural movement is loop, loop, loop. No, you want to go All 
All right, so you get those movements clockwise, counterclockwise, and you do it with eyes open. So you are actually trying to look now, and what you're looking for is the edge of the eye. So you're no longer, you know, drawing a circle on a post-it note. You're like, man, this circle is real. And what you'll find is as you move to the left, you start to hit the outside edge of the left peripheral field of vision up to the top. And as you come over to the right, you're like doing the same thing on the other side. All the way down. All the way over, all the way up. If you're like me, like along the way I'll be like, doo -doo -doo, you know, I get a little distracted and, it, and I don't hit it all the way. So you might need to do something like this. All the way down. All the way outside. All the way up. All the way over. All the way down. So you're, you're, you know, you're growing your grid a little wider each time. And your eye muscles are getting stronger. So always switching directions. Breathing. Hopefully, you know, I find that when I get really focused on hand eye stuff, I'll hang my tongue out of my mouth or um, just stop breathing or take really short, shallow breaths. So, like, maybe halfway through. And then all the way down. From there, I want you to close the eyes and flutter them into the back of your head. flutter them down. And you're going to take your right hand or your left hand, whatever side you want to start with, where you can see the finger. So I'm not looking at the finger, I'm staring forward, but I can still see my finger moving. I can still see it moving. Still see it moving. At what point do I no longer sense movement. That's where I stop and that's what I focus on. I'm like, I'm trying to see out of the edge of my eye where my vision no longer perceives movement. I can still see movement. I can still see right about there and not much information. Same thing other side. Still sensing movement, still sensing movement, still sensing movement. Oh, this side is my left side. It's not as used as my right side, so I, I'm pretty sure this is as far as I can see movement and it's not nearly as far back as my right side was. So um, when you have to start having these like clues where, oh, this is actually what's going on, my left side is definitely weaker, do more on the left side. Try to balance this situation out, you know. Um, one last thing you can do, you can get the hands really, really hot. Super hot, right? So lots of friction. take those hot hands and you put them over your eyeballs and you let your eyeballs relax as you actively press your hands into your eyes. Release. So those are just kind of some fundamental starter movements that you can work with for the eyes. Um, don't forget about the jaw work. Don't forget about the breath work. Uh, <laughs> reminder, I'm not a medical doctor. Uh, I, I, t I talk about what I know has worked for me and what I've seen work with students and friends and teachers that I've worked with. So um, please feel free to email me or respond in the uh, comment section below. If you like this, if you want to see more, um, share it with a friend, any, any stroke survivors, you know, anyone that's had their vision affected by whatever. Um, and uh, if, if you'd like any more information, my website, republicyogahouston.com. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can follow me. I post crazy yoga videos up on my Instagram. The cats usually put a lot of them. So um, thank you for um, tuning in and subscribe to my channel and do more yoga.